Welcome to the Boost Running Performance Podcast, your go-to source for enhancing your endurance running performances. Listen to the stories, secrets, and training strategies from the best distance runners in the country and take your running to the next level. Whether you're just starting out as a distance runner or a veteran in the sport, stay tuned with us and get a glimpse of what training and competing is like at the top. For more information about us, please visit our website at BoostRunningPerformance.com. How's it going, everyone? My name is Andy Padilla with Boost Running Performance, and I'm here with my co-host, Alma Padilla, and our very special guest, Eric Avila. How's it going? It's going good, man. How are you doing? Good, how are you? <laughs> yeah. Excited. Excited to be here with you guys. All right. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today, guys, and thank you, Eric, for taking time out of your day to come visit with us and uh, uh, enjoy a little chat. So, um, yeah. uh, before we get started, we are in San Diego, California, um, our hometown, our school hometown, and where uh, hometown. Eric is from, hometown. Yeah, he's from Bonita. And um, we're basically catching up and seeing how we can help improve your running performances with uh, any of the things that he's gone through. Um, and so we'll be asking him a series of questions. So um, again, before we get started, just to let you know, we all went on a 13 plus mile run this morning at around seven minute pace and um, pretty much chatting up the whole way. So we got to know each other a little better. And um, as we you know, come up with these questions, we hope that you guys have any, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to um, ask, right, ask them below or why not. So anyway. Um, let's go ahead and get this started. So, um, Alma, you can go ahead and, and here we go in this first one. So, Eric, what part of your training phase are you in now? What my training phase am I in? Uh, so this is kind of my off season right now. Uh, you know, in the in the, the track world, there's, there's no cross country, and, and I'm, I I don't do much of road racing right now. Uh, maybe in the future I see it, but uh, but right now I'm in the building phase. So uh, at this point. Um, we're just getting like getting the miles in, and uh, we're looking towards next year, and obviously an Olympic year and stuff. So, so we're looking, looking forward to the to January and beyond that. So. Yeah. that sounds good. Well, another thing we wanted to go through um, with, with these questions here is we wanted to get to know you a little bit more, yeah. and um, find out like like how did you get started? How did you get started with running? Like, what was the? When did you first start running? Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, high school, man. I mean, I played soccer uh, growing up, like a lot of kids do. Uh, I was a midfielder. Uh, looking back on that, it, that's like the position that does most of the running, you yeah. know, up and down the field a lot. Um, and then I didn't make the varsity team my freshman year of high school in soccer, and I immediately threw a little fit, and I made the varsity <laughs> team in, in cross country, and I was like, well, I want a Letterman jacket, so I guess I'll do this. No, yeah. that's kind of the, uh, the Cliff Notes version of it, but uh, well, yeah. <laughs> it seemed like it paid off, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy to think about, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, uh, so you started from say 14 is that is that freshman year in high school yeah yeah about 14 okay so you did the whole cross country track all that the distance type stuff right now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was 14 I did I did actually did cross country to stay in shape for soccer and then the way um, a lot of people do a lot, a lot of people <laughs> do yeah and, and the cross country season is in the fall and soccer didn't start till about uh, I want to say November or December and uh, unfortunately for the soccer team I enjoyed the cross country atmosphere so much more, and uh, and they kept telling me, "Well, you're gonna do track, right?" And I was like, "No, I'm gonna play lacrosse." And they were like, "What are you talking about?" Lacrosse, and I was yeah. like, "What are you talking about?" All right? Why not, right? Yeah, because lacrosse in the spring, I had it all laid out. You know, I'm 14. I know what I'm doing with my life. Yeah. This is right. What I'm doing. You know, <laughs> don't we all know? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that was the initial plan, and then it kind of, uh, I guess, you know, the rest is history, as they say. So you did the whole four years of uh, uh, of high school. Uh, you went on to compete uh, collegiately, right? Yeah, so tell me about that. How did that go? Yeah, yeah, that was a rocky road. Not exactly as, as uh, you know you would expect as well. So uh, yeah, so I, I had a really good uh, high school career. Uh, I played soccer on and off. It was hard to let that go. So I actually had some injuries. I broke my foot when I was like a freshman, and then um, playing soccer, and then. But by the end of it, I figured it out and I committed to running. And then I actually had the pleasure of, uh, of being the state champion at California State Meet track my senior year, and then that kind of opened a lot of doors. Um, so I went to Northern Arizona University initially, and um, to run for them. All right. <laughs> Big mountain town. You guys are familiar. Yeah, Blackstaff. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's altitude. Out there. altitude. That's what a lot of people know about. Yeah. yeah at the time, there was a guy named Lopez Lemong that was on the team, oh, and I was guy. just like, this guy's <laughs> kind of a big deal. I, <laughs> right. And I remember telling my mom, like, yeah, give me a year and I'll beat him. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah. Now, but and I'm know. like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But um, but yeah, it was a really good uh, experience. A massive learning curve. I got there, and, and I realized what training really was. I, you know, looking back on it, um, not that I wasn't training properly. High school, I had, uh -huh. I had great coaches, but um, just it's it's a different thing when you get to college, especially Division One and stuff like that. And I don't think I was ready for it, um, but ultimately things didn't really work out. My fault for, for a number of things, and then I, I came back. 
came back home and, and then uh, eventually ended up in Oregon for you know, a second chance and then things really worked out up there at Southern Oregon University now. Right on, right on. So with that being said, you mentioned that uh, you know you had had some success early on. Um, just to give us some some details here, what what type of times were you hitting? What were your PRs in high school and then in college? Yeah, uh, high school. Uh, I'm a little bitter, as a lot of people are with their PRs. <laughs> I feel like that's the nature of our sport, you know. Unfortunately or not, you look at your PRs and you're always like, well, I could have this or that, but. But uh, yeah, my, I actually PR'd the state meet final. Um, I ran 901 in the state final. So that's technically, that was my high school PR. And then uh, I ran a 414 mile and um, a, a 153-800. And then I ran a 49-400 in the 4x4. Nice, was, nice. I was pretty excited was it, Were you an anchor that. in that one? I was an anchor. <laughs> actually, yeah. Yeah, it was between me and one other guy who was the official 400 guy. I think we had similar marks, but we go back and forth. It was kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Well, um, I'm gonna ask a question here. So, tell us a little bit about your most memorable, ra memorable races. Most memorable races? That's so hard. You know, especially at this point, I'm 26 now, and yeah. there's so many races there, you know. Um, oh man, like, like the California State Meet when I won, that was electric. Because uh, I wasn't, I think they had a preview the, night, the week before, and they put like the predicted top 10, yeah. and I wasn't even on it. And so, uh, that was, you know. Something to prove. That was yeah. pretty yeah. exciting, you know. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, I have to say, when I broke four for the first time, uh, that was a magical moment. I, I, you know, and I was just in my hometown. Awesome. You know, yeah, I was really, really fit. And, and then uh, I heard about uh, there was this race in San Diego. And Jim Ryan was putting it on with the San Diego Track Club and, and a big group down here. And um, they said they were gonna have rabbits. And then uh, I really wanted to break four. You know, I knew I was in shape. And then I came down and, and I arrived. And to my surprise, there was like 50 to 60 of my best family, friends, and, and people there, they're all in the stands, they had shirts on with my oh, name on dude. it. The and support was there. The support was the huge. Support and that was, my, was there. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. First race in San Diego since my, since high school. Um, so that was like, I was really emotional to be honest, like, you yeah. know, and then coming down the home stretch, it was just, everything was overwhelming and I couldn't believe, you know, you know, that I broke four and then everyone was there and it was in San Diego. You couldn't script it any better. So yeah. that was like, never going to forget one of those. Now, before. now that, just to, not to go you off here, sure. but the, the 356, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. not just yeah. like barely breaking four. What was your PR before that? Oh man, I think it was a 406. A 406. Wow. So that is a huge PR <laughs> from a 406 to a 356. I mean, where do you, where do you just squeeze in 10 seconds? Like, how do you shave off 10 seconds? Seconds. Well, like, had it been <laughs> had it been a long time since you raced that? Or? Yeah, the, I mean, in college and in the professional world, you know, a lot of guys know, or if you don't know, you know, you run, we run the fifteen hundred, so it's a metric mile. So uh, you don't have the opportunity to run the mile that often. Uh, going to Southern Oregon University, we didn't really have a full indoor season, and that's when they run the mile. So um, I was uh, deprived of, of <laughs> the ability to race the mile for a number of years, and then uh, I had run equivalent of a sub four prior to that race uh, a couple of times. So we okay. knew I was like on the door. It was just a matter of, you know, getting the right rabbits, getting the pacers, and getting the right environment, and yeah. then uh, and taking advantage. And, and it's hard, you know, to, to get all those at the same night. And make yeah, it yeah. It's it's you have to have the right time, right yeah. race, right competition, right pre-race uh, rituals, and all yeah. that stuff. And um, um, well, it worked out to your advantage, right? Oh yeah, man. I mean, yeah, that was an amazing night. And that's why you still train, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean that. that <laughs> You know, it's I like, guess, yeah, Hoka liked what they saw, I guess, right? Thanks, Hoka. <laughs> Speaking of Hoka, so what, uh, you're repping right now Hoka, right? Hoka 1 1. Tell us about that. What is Hoka 1 1 and, and, Hoka and how long have you been with them? Yeah, so uh, I graduated from Southern Oregon in June 2014 and then, uh, you know, went through the process of trying to figure out what to do next and, and talking to people and stuff like that. And then, uh, it, you know, Hoka kind of came out of nowhere at the time. I didn't, didn't know too much about the company. Okay. Uh, but then I got to meet uh, a lot of the, their marketing team and I actually got to sit down and, and, and talk to the president of uh, Hoka at the time. And um, they've been super supportive. And so, uh, yeah, so I signed on with them and, and they, uh, they're just there backing me 100, 110% for anything I, I do in my running and, and where I want to go. And and, uh, and they believe in me. Uh, you know, this year's been, I had a little up and down year this year, but they've been super supportive and just awesome about everything. And, and they're, they're doing really good things in the sports. And so I'm excited. Absolutely. I'm excited to be involved with them. Yeah, they've, they've grown a lot um, and they've expanded very, very, very fast. So, I mean, we have a lot to see from Hoka and, and it's been a, a cool, see, cool yeah. thing to see, you know, with, uh, you know, starting from, the different shoe line and then the athlete side that we get pretty excited about when we see you know uh, elite athletes come about and it's just really exciting but um talking a little bit about your training i mean what, what was it that uh 
that uh, want to go into a training. I mean, obviously, training is like a lot of times people want to know what the secrets are. And Everyone so, wants to know that. So yeah, what, what is what, the secret? I get asked it all the time. What is, um, you know, like, do you do, you do any weight training? Let's I just, do. Let's just yeah, start I off do. with something basic. You do weight sure. training? Okay, so yeah. what do you do for weight training? Can't you tell, man? I'm huge. Right, right. All of us are, right? We're all <laughs> <laughs> endurance runners. So um, how, how, what does that typically look like for you? Sure. A, a, yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. session or, or a week sessions or what does that look like? Like a, day, like a weekly session. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think a lot of like training, just like marathon training that we talked earlier, that you're training, you guys train for a marathon, and right. it goes in cycles, things like that. So you know, again, the cycles. I'm in a in a base phase right now, so I'm not hitting the weight room as much as I will uh, in you know maybe three or four months. Okay. But and when I do that, um, yeah, typically a week would go. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'll be in the weight room. So three times a week, actually. A lot of people are surprised to hear that, but but being like a mile to 5K guy, you, you know, you gotta have that explosiveness. The and power. The power. The explosiveness, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll get in the weight room, uh, usually Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday evening. Saturday's usually pretty light. Tuesday, Thursdays, we go pretty hard. Right. And then, uh, yeah, and those are weights. And then aside from that, usually uh, we'll have some like basic push-up stuff, you know, your own uh, body weight. Consistent your body weight, absolutely. Yeah, that, you yeah, accomplish your body weight no matter what. At exactly. Some point. Exactly. So, and then the fact that you're you're training your explosiveness, the type yeah. one fast twitch muscle fibers, exactly. that's all going to help out. Yeah. Especially in a 1500 meter race where you need to be able to respond just like that. Right. Um. Right. So as far as routine goes, um, a lot of us want to know. Um, walk us through what race day rituals. Race day rituals. This is funny. So when I was at Southern Oregon, I was there. I ran for them for three years. Um, I I went through. I would go through like. I'd have a ritual set, and then I would start to, if I had a bad race, I would kind of be like, oh, it, it, it's my yeah. pre-race day ritual, I gotta, I gotta change it up, and I, and I keep tweaking it, it's kind of funny, and I think runners are, in a, in a sense, are kind of super superstitious about a lot of stuff, you hear about baseball players who do it, and, and to, to oh, an absolutely. extent, I do that as well, but yeah, usually what I'll do is, um, I'll eat probably around five or six hours before the race, and then anything, five or six hours. Five or six so let me hours. cut you off. Let me cut you off. What if you have like an eight o'clock race in the morning, or do you ever have eight o'clock oh, races in the morning? Oh man, no. Usually, lucky okay. for me, most of my I'm not a marathoner, so you guys, you guys have early <laughs> okay. morning stuff. See, we could run out of the heat today, and it's only for three or four yeah. minutes. Or okay, so okay. But uh, most of the time, most Fair of my enough. races are in the afternoon or evening, so I'm okay. <laughs> All right, just check. But yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Because like, you have to wake up at one. That would be <laughs> terrible. Uh, but yeah, usually five or six hours, I'll have a full meal, big meal. Okay. And uh, usually it's whatever I want. Stay away from the meat and steak, but usually it's uh, something, some sandwich. I usually go like go with some sandwiches, stuff like that. After that, I'm a big Cliff Bar fan, and so okay. I'll uh, I'll usually munch on Cliff Bars if I'm, if I'm feeling a little hungry, but I won't have any other meals. Just oh, just, just to cut you off, what flavor Cliff Bar? Because I mean, we her and I, we both love Cliff Bars, really? but we have our different flavors. What is yours? Uh, it goes back and forth between the oatmeal and the macadamia. Oh, those are my two. Those are totally my two. Yeah, those what are, are you, great. Um, what, what's yours? Uh, chocolate chip and brownie. The brownie those one. Those are good too. No, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, come on, good. guys. The macadamia. The macadamia. Nut. And the oatmeal. Good. That's like. This. I'm a huge oatmeal fan too. <laughs> yeah. So. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, uh, my next routine is four hours before I'll do a little shake out. Shake it's kind of like right. six hours. The clock starts. So, yeah. So before that. I can do whatever pretty much for the most part. You know, I'll okay. do a lot of napping in the, the day. But uh, six hours, this is like the countdown to, to race time. And uh, so we'll do a meal and then four hours, we'll shake out. And then the next countdown phase is two hours, I'll have a cup of coffee. And that's it. Coffee. And, uh, and then between the two hours to race time, I sip on Gatorade. Uh, on and off, I usually spit it out, or just kind of. That's just like a nervous twitch. Yeah, type carbohydrate of swooshing. That is a thing where you know you yeah. can absorb some of those uh, good, good, good glucose just by just putting it in your mouth and spitting it out. Yeah, you know yeah. it really, it really does. That's what. No, yeah. I, I, I totally. Yeah. Sometimes, like in the past, I have too much caffeine, and I'd find I was a little dizzy before races. And so, I, how, how much caffeine? Like, what are we talking about? Are we talking about like Starbucks coffee here? Or are we talking about like a um, oh, regular yeah. taster's choice, or like what? No, I dabbled with some five-hour energies, and those are pretty pretty potent yeah uh, they're pretty strong but um sometimes yeah, i had like two or three cups one time and i was like it's too much coffee five hour energy for a four minute race <laughs> yeah i don't know you know no but yeah, no, no i'm just kidding sure, but sure. no in all, in all honestly that that you, you i don't do that anymore that was it was a mistake <laughs> but general but general coffee i mean that's that's been one of the things that people are starting to take hold of uh, a coffee as being one of the things to improve your endurance and, it, and especially in the longer distances we, we do find that that has been beneficial but right. there's always that fine line how much coffee should we take? Is it, you know, right, how many right, milligrams? Right. And what works for you? What work, doesn't mean it works for someone else. So 
what works for you is you know what is it a regular cup of coffee just black like black one cup maybe black a little sugar cup? okay yeah, that's all i have now yeah i got that's, down it took four yeah. years but I got and then you're your same thing way yeah right i just like black coffee no creamer yeah. no creamer i'm, I'm the opposite it's i had to have a little bit of creamer you know i, I like anything. creamer yeah. just not for races maybe oh yeah just not before races <laughs> i've had that mistake before so yeah um on a downhill race but anyway yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Not, not, neither here or there um oh anyway let's just go through um some of your favorites now uh favorite what well, I mean outside of running what are some of your sure. hobbies and what do you what do you like to do on your off time my off time uh at least since it's kind of funny uh when i was in school i had uh, a lot going on you know i like to play volleyball and soccer but okay get in trouble with the coaching yeah uh, right, right, right. But, as, uh, we, as we all yeah, do. Yeah, exactly, we all exactly. Do. Yeah, but uh, actually, it's funny. I picked up uh, reading a lot, and so uh, I love a good book, uh, a cup of coffee and a good book, and, and that's been pretty fun. Um, uh, I've been, like, camping a lot more, and uh, so I actually just bought a hammock, and <laughs> those are amazing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. I just got an Eno hammock. They're, like, made of, uh, I think they're made of the same material that uh, parachutes are made of, or space suits. Or, they might be lying to me. The one you got. <laughs> the one I got was made of. Space material. No, it's it's really cool. So and you can just strap it up grade. anywhere. Yeah. No, so it's really cool. And then yeah. uh, my brother's real techie and stuff. And so you know, my, when I when I'm home, I'll hang out with my family. And my brother and I'll catch up with some play some video games and and uh, it's it's really cool. So you know, it's it's nice. Yeah. Uh, so what are some of your favorite workouts? Favorite Type workouts? workouts to do? I'll tell you what my least favorite workouts are. Tell us. Stand out. Are they the most effective ones? <laughs> they are actually. Okay, yeah. so the ones they're... that I hate the most are the ones that I'm probably actually benefiting the most yeah. out of. And what? Which is the long those? tempos, man. Long tempos. Long right? tempos are, are my enemy, but at the same time, they they help me so much when I'm done. I feel so strong, but they also hurt. They hurt more than anything. I could do weights. I could do 400 repeats all day. I could do mile repeats, and they don't hurt nearly as much as long oh, tempos. How long is your tempo? Uh, it, it varies on a part of the season. Um, I think I'll get up to like. 40 minutes would be a pretty long threshold. Yeah. I like guess so, you would say threshold. Let's though. just get this right, guys. I know sometimes people talk about tempos and they think, oh, it's an hour plus or whatnot. Yeah. Tempos are sometimes synonymously, synonymously kind of like related to uh, brisk running or lactate threshold running or aerobic threshold running. And they kind of get tossed around here and there. But really, it's a pretty hard effort for anywhere from like, let's say 15 minutes to about 40, 45 minutes or so. And so 40 minutes is pushing. That'd be like my max. It is pushing yeah. the envelope standard on that. is like 25 So now I can see he's like really hurting on those yeah, samples. Yeah, yeah. But, but um, uh, anyway, they are very effective. Like you mentioned, yeah. probably one of the ones that you get the more bang for your, for your yeah. buck on those. And um, it's probably one of the most translatable uh, types of training. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it's not like on the endurance end where you run forever, or it's yeah, not like yeah. you know quarter repeats. Yeah. So like, either exactly. you know we'll do two or three mile warm up, and then we'll do thirty to forty minutes of whatever the prescribed things. A lot of times it's a cut down too. So so a lot of times, and you know, I guess I could describe for, for the people listening. And a lot of times we'll do the first ten or fifteen minutes at a certain pace, and then we'll pick it up by ten seconds. Okay. The next ten minutes, gotcha. and then the last ten minutes we'll be hitting a little bit harder, and then and then we'll. Have a prescribed cool down, maybe some strides, and then so yeah, it actually ends up being a good 10 or 11 mile uh, run. But yeah, it's all yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, it hurts, it burns, man. I, I don't like those ones, but it's they're good. good, and I know that they help me the most. Yeah, and so the yeah, that's that's obviously a good, yeah, good workout. So yeah. Lisa, that was your uh, least favorite, that's my least most favorite effective. one. Yeah. What's your most favorite, least effective? No, <laughs> yeah, no, sure. no, that's no, what's your, what's your favorite one. Man, like, those are like? my bread and butter. I like they're, they're just so easy, and I like them, and, and they're short and quick. To point, you know, uh, aka quarters 12, 12 400s, man, or 16 400s. You yeah, know, mile pace a lot of times. Uh, those are just fine. Those are mile pace, not pure pace. Uh, I mean, not, not goal pace, is it? It's usually like Close just to? just off goal pace. So, like, just most of the time, pace. we don't go like all out. So, if I'm trying to run, you know, if you want to break four in the mile, you got what 60 seconds, right? Right, so you got 60 seconds. So, uh, when I went 356. We were actually thinking, I mean, anyone can, like I said, anyone, anyone can say anything. We were pretty sure I was in shape for, you know, 353 or 354. So we were doing uh, a lot of the repeats at 59s. We were like, that's just off. So if I can do 59s, very comfortable, then, you know, we could probably, if so, back though. You could do that all day. But um, yeah, yeah. 59 to 60 was like, I remember that workout. And I remember it felt so comfortable that we knew, like, Rough, we just knew. So, so roughly 10 to 12, at what type of recovery times were you guys? Were you guys at a fixed recovery time? Or were you doing any kind of heart rate? About a minute, a minute, a uh, minute recovery. Minute recovery. That's yeah. that's a pretty yeah. short recovery. Yeah, it's that's pretty short. That's mono. That's like 60 seconds on, 60 yeah. seconds off. You know? Literally, yeah. You just go, and then when you're done, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, was it a float or was it just stop? Stop. Uh, no, you jog, like jog in place, jog okay, back so, and forth. Okay, so a little bit of a float, kind of yeah, shake out. Kind of float, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, 
keep the blood circulating. Yeah, I think I would right. jog like around the bend, and then I would turn around at 30 seconds, and I right. get back to the start, right. and then we, we hit it again. Um, Good. We do that, but we build into it, you know. Like I think, Absolutely. we yeah, when I'm not doing that workout in January, uh, right. you know, when you're ready not. to roll. When I'm ready to roll, like that, that really, I think I did that workout the week before I broke more. So that's one of your key workouts too. Yeah, that'd be yeah. like a big sharpening workout sure. at the end. So yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, as far as apparel goes, I mean, what do, what do we have for apparel here? What are your favorite shoes? Talk to some of your favorite shoes. Sure. Um, oh man, I wish I brought it. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, I rock a lot of togas, and they're, 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 they're pretty awesome. Uh, the Clifton 2 right now is one of my favorite easy run kind of shoes. They're like an all-purpose shoe. Uh, I think today on our 13 mile run, I wore this shoe called the Speed Goats. Okay. It's a trail specific shoe, kind of runs a little narrow, which is nice. It's a little lighter than some of the other trail shoes. Um, it's really responsive. So, so like Speed Goats is my go-to for trails, uh, preferably at least. Uh, the Clifton is like an all-purpose one, and I actually like to wear the Clifton it's just like when I'm traveling or walking around. And I can run in them, so that's really cool. And then uh, if I'm doing a race or a workout, uh, we have the Rocket, which is it's the flat. It's actually coming out in April 2016, so that's pretty cool. And I, I love it, and yeah. it's been a lot of fun wearing those. And then obviously uh, I was lucky enough this year to get some, some really sweet spikes from Hoka too. So I got to do some workouts in them, and I did a couple of races in September in them. And it was, so we have some spikes to look forward to from yeah, Hoka. Yeah, those will awesome. be on the market as well. As far as I know, it'll yeah. be out to the public in April. It's killer, killer. They're, they're really broadening their shoe, their shoe lines. Huh? Yeah, oh yeah, man. They're they're planting their, their seeds everywhere. And it's pretty That's exciting. awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'd like, uh, like to hear about more of that, that uh, yeah. uh, obviously later. But uh, one thing we did notice is uh, Stan's. What is Stan's? Stan socks, man. Stan Tell socks. us about Stan socks. Oh well, if you if you're out there and you watch the NBA at all right now, you will see all the NBA players players wearing Stan socks. So Stan actually just got a contract with uh, with the NBA and, and they're affiliated and tied with that. So yeah, they are everywhere. It's crazy. I just saw them on uh, at Sports Story. Was it Sports Story? Yeah. Sports Chalet. I think mean, yeah. I saw one of the stores and I'm like, um, oh yeah, Eric. Uh, hello. These, these there's a connection. Yeah, they're like there, six so. months out of being in 7-Eleven or something. <laughs> <laughs> no. So so they have a running line, do they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, okay. it's called Stan's Run. It launched in March, uh, okay. 2015. Not that long ago, but yeah. So uh, yeah, they're really good and they're really cool. And uh, one of the proponents with them was um, uh, when I when I broke court in San Diego uh, last summer. The, uh, there was some of their marketing team was there, and one of the managers that runs the Stan's Run department was there. And so shortly after, he kind of approached me, and we kind of started talking. Actually, we went on a run. And uh, in like La Jolla out here. So you gotta do it, man. You gotta go yeah. for a run first. We got a run. And not, no run, that's not official. <laughs> yeah, it was great. He handed me some socks, and I was like, two for one. These are sweet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so we kept talking, and, and then uh, it worked out um, with Hoka and them that there was no uh, uh, conflict of interest, I guess you could say. Okay. And um, yeah, so it worked out. So right now, yeah, I, I, get, to, I get to wear their stuff and, and uh, race in their, in their attire. Actually, last week I went out to Temecula for the Wine Country Half Marathon, and I got to uh, hand out some socks. It was really nice. cool. So, Nice, nice. So, um, uh, let's see. With racing, I mean, you're racing all the time. You're on, you're off. You're on. Yeah. You're, you're at your base. You mentioned you're at base training right yeah. now. So, uh, what's, what's next? next for you? Yeah, what's next? What's next? That's a good question. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm here. What is it? It's November 28th. We're at pre. I mean, post Thanksgiving. Uh, post Thanksgiving. A few days after Thanksgiving. The Saturday after Thanksgiving, 2015. Yeah, yeah. So was this is ago. your base training. Yeah. You're in San Diego. You're hey man, now. best place to be on Thanksgiving. <laughs> it is. I mean, oh, I miss man. Oregon. I love Oregon. It's great. Uh -huh. But uh, nothing beats this weather right now. You know, and getting on the run this morning with you guys is. It is so nice. Out. I think I'm getting sunburned. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. So we're hurting in these 70 yeah, degree it's, weather. It's so know? rough. For us, it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah. So. I'm in a base building phase right now. Uh, I'll have another six to eight week building block. And then uh, in the beginning of January, I'll go back up to Oregon. And um, uh, I'm gonna be joining up in Eugene with Ian Dobson and a group up there. Nice. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to it. And then um, we'll, we'll do a couple races indoors. We won't focus too much on it, but we'll do some. We'll do maybe one or two races at the end of January. And going over into the beginning of February. Uh, we'll do some up in Seattle, and then and then from there we have some other targets, like we might go back east for a race or two. Uh, and then the World Indoors is in Portland this year, and, and we're gonna see where the cards lie when I go race, you know? If, okay. if, we're, if we're doing well, then we'll we'll pursue that. If not, you know, it's an Olympic year, so of course everyone's really, really looking at July 1st. That's when the trials start. Right. Um, so yeah, so, so that's what I'm doing right now, and then uh, sometime at the end of February, early March, I'll take another mini break. I'll probably come back here for two weeks and 
recharge and then really make that big push for the outdoor season. Trials. The trials, yeah, yeah, yeah the trials. July 1st, July 10th, be there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, did. Yeah. So uh, tell me, where, where can uh, the people on the Blues Running Performance um, uh, website, where can we find your your posts? Like, where I mean, what, what's your Instagram uh, hashtags? Where can Twitter. we find you? Yeah, yeah, so I am Run with Avila. Remember the Avila? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so it's Instagram slash uh, Run with Avila and Twitter.com slash Run with Avila. And those are mine. And I have a Facebook too. I don't think it's Run with Avila. It's just me. <laughs> Eric Avila. Uh, Eric Avila, yeah. So, so check that out. And uh, I have some links on there to other things. And, you know, on uh, the show notes and at the bottom of this post, we'll be putting up all the links if you guys are interested in any of those hashtags. things. Hashtags. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alma will take yeah. care of that. She's a, the social media guru here. Yeah. So, um, well, thank you for joining us and taking time out of your day to come hang out, have a run, have some, have some food and some coffee. And um, uh, we look forward to hearing from you and, and, and all your success in the future. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and good luck in your marathon. All right. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Congratulations. All right, man. Catch you later.